All right, listen. Hey, we're in trouble here. Um, New York comedy not doing so well. Comedy in general might be over. This is really my wildest fantasies come to life. You know, back in the 90s, you used to have to call a 1-900 number on USA's Up All Night with Ron Shear to get this kind of satisfaction. I ain't got to do nothing now. I wake up and my hottest dreams become... Well, what's the opposite of fiction? I couldn't be more happy that stand-up comedy is dying. And wow, the winter. What will the winter hold for these rooftop performers, huh? These chimney sweepers, I call them. Mary Poppins style, coming out with a burnt face and a screwed up umbrella. So, uh, yeah, we've seen Sam Morrell on the top of the roof. Hey! It's me, Sam Morrell. I'm on the top. We've seen, um, uh, what's his Whoa, hey, it's me. Yeah, I'm out uh, doing car comedy. Yeah, I'm on the top of a Pacifica talking to a crowd of a Kia Optima drivers. Yeah, please gag me. And then somebody said something, you know, Joe DeRosa during our spy report. Well, during our pry report. Remember Joe DeRosa, the pry goes, so why aren't you doing comedy? Very pryful. And Joe DeRosa said, well, you know, uh, I got into comedy, you know, it'd be like a nightclub comic and, you know, comedy these days is like, you know, a barker at a state fair and that's just not my vibe. It's a nice, a sandwich shop maker, not even an owner of a sandwich shop. He makes sandwiches in the back of an old comedy club that can't be open for comedy. So now they make sandwiches and it's pretty much dead. But I respect that. At least I respect, well, I don't respect the sandwich thing, but I respect the, uh, the, yeah, I'm not going to do comedy outside for six people on a roof. That's not what stand-up comedy is. And I agree. Um, So let's watch this little news video, New York City. Uh, How will New York stand-up weather the winter? And a lot of people responded with simply, it won't. Thank fucking God. So let's watch this little video. It's viral. Oh, look at this. It's from the New Yorker. Wow, a very serious. Where's that little video? It's going to pop up here. We're waiting. Here we go. And it's got this great uh, commentary. How am I doing on time? Uh Uh-oh. Sorry, I got What's a, going on here? I got another I got to sign in. Oh, you just got to turn off your <laughs> Okay, hold on. Turn off ad block, you say? Yep. Look at all this crap. Pause on this site. Give it a good refresh. Sorry, the New Yorker is very well, you know. They're harvest. <laughs> All right, read the story for free. Do I have to do that? Or you, Jules, I don't think it's an ad block What the thing. fuck? It worked for me when I did that. It yeah. says right there. Here, refresh it. Look at all this stuff. No thanks. You have an account, sign in. It keeps saying you got to have an account, Jules. Here we go. I'm going to refresh one more time. Okay, click that down arrow. Click the down arrow, okay. Should work. Let's find out. How will New York stand-ups weather the, the winner? Jeez, they're really trying to sell me here. Here we go. Good, a free ad. Yeah, the kids are going to decorate cinnamon rolls. Maybe that's what the comedian should start doing. Cinnamon roll experts down at the airport at Cinnabon. Grands. Here we go. What the hell is this? This is another ad? A lot of commercials for a news story. The New Yorker. Here we are. How am I doing on time? Wow, how pathetic. Sorry, I got it. I got another set at a hot dog cart in Central Park. Uh, <laughs> I gotta get to. <laughs> That's right. I played the same stage as the Beatles, and then God stopped my joy. The Every club in New York City is fucked. Wow. <laughs> How essential is a comedy club? Comedians have been forced to operate underground. The future of the New York club? This sounds like something the comedy curator might have made. Or Jason Yates. Oh, look at that. That's Ian Finance. This guy is crazy. This guy gets like uh, black dildos shoved up his mouth and stuff like that. And screwballs through his eyes and all sorts of stuff. Yikes. I've seen him. Oh, I think you just burnt myself. You smoke it. I might have talked about the future of the club scene when I just burnt myself in a hammock. Yeah, well, keep sucking him down, Ian. Smoking a cigarette while he's out of work. Imagine that. 
Oh, I can't get any work. I'll buy a $22 pack of cigarettes and suck them down in a hammock. That's a good move. Get up! Get to work! <laughs> Cut it! I can't kill comedy. You just have to put the show on and people come. I've never felt less essential in my life. Everything feels very illegal. Who are you? Who are you? Is New York comedy dead? Look at this. Am I dreaming? Has Shouldn't COVID-19 rendered New York City dead forever? Why do you think New York City is Let's dead? Watch. People I haven't seen this. This is exciting. Permanently. Empty storefronts for lease signs. The city needs to step in and address a deteriorating Big Apple. Nice. Goodbye, New York. I'm glad this to see it go. Pre Giuliani, New York City. The stand. Sneaking beer and drinking it on the street. Hi, welcome back, childhood. Shut up, dirtbag. New York dirtbag. There's a fire hydrant pop. There's people having drinks in the soup. I don't want to be anywhere else on the planet going through this. Right? What's this guy's name? He was so rude to me. Sean what? Sean Patton. Sean Patton. Never made it. <laughs> he was on pace to be a big star. This is the big, fat, asshole, drunk Sean Patton. I'll tell you some stories about him. He used to be thin. He used to be thin. And boy, was he on pace to be the next T.J. Miller. I know that sounds like nothing anymore, but believe me, there was one point where comedy's rising star was T.J. Miller. Sean Patton was next in line. And he used to come down to New York. He was uh, uh, to Chicago. He was a New York comic, I believe, and everyone loved him. When he showed up at the Lincoln Lodge here in Chicago, oh, Sean Patton's going up. We all must pay attention. I never thought he was too good, and I remember a few years back, I I went to the Lincoln Lodge again. This was a historic comedy joint. It's no longer doing comedy. It's uh, back to its old days of just being a pancake house. And Sean came on and he looked like this, as big as a house. And he had, no joke, a belly like Amy Schumer nine months pregnant. It was ridiculous and his face was red with drunk rosacea. And he was on stage and he looked like crap. Okay, he had this huge pot belly. And he wasn't this fat. He was kind of like still his regular size, but his belly was like Doug Stanhope had the same thing where they're such alcoholics that they're, they drink beer after beer. Oh, they're up all night drinking beer. That nothing makes me sicker than a guy in his 30s up all night at a bar drinking cheap beer. All night, every night of the week, beer after beer after beer. When I see a guy who drinks 15 beers, I get mad. You don't need that much beer. Have a couple of shots here. You get a drink. I couldn't drink 15 Sprites. I'd be stuffed. And these guys are stuffed without knowing it. And he went up there with the pot belly. And everyone was, oh, he said. And I go, is anyone going to say something before this guy dies? Is anyone going to say, maybe ease up on the beers? You know, he looks like he's uh, going to pop here. And uh, after that show, we uh, got to remember this right. Um, after that show, he treated me like crap. Uh, he came, and I was sitting down at a table with a few girls, few guys. We were hanging out, and he came, and he sat at our table at this bar next door to the Lincoln Lodge. And he sat there, and he was just quiet. He was overhearing our stuff. And then out of nowhere, he wasn't, vibe, he wasn't vibing with our conversation. And out of nowhere, he goes, Well, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. And left. And I said, I did one of these. <laughs> so long to you. Like that. What do you call that? An Italian's flick off under the neck flick off. I had never been more insulted. Now, I can't really describe. Again, it's a little fuzzy, but I'm telling you, he's bad news. You had a feeling. <laughs> I had a feeling. And I started picking on him last year. I started picking on him. He went fool. He went total fool. And now here he is. Dripping with sweat. Look at him. Covered in sweat. You go, Mike, is that like a tan tie-dye shirt that he's wearing? No, that's all sweat. That's alcoholic sweat. No joke. Look at his face. You big fat cow. You're on pace to be dead now. Okay? Like Pat Bryce. R.I.P. Right Sorry. 
Comedy is one of the only live performance art forms doing anything in all of New York. It's something to look forward to. Do you not like a lot of the women I meet here in New York who are like, why do you breathe like that? <laughs> Out New York Coast, comedy is over. Let's Coast. see what happens. Raw and real. Yeah, you're going to get mugged. It's going to suck. Ari Shapiro! In moments, it's going to make New York fucking a story town again. Wait, wait, wait. You're back in action? I thought you ran off and you lived uh, with your parents. So he's back. Look, and what is he doing? Smoking a cigar without me. Ari Shafir there. Oh, what what a badass. Smoking his cigar. Yeah, comedy's dangerous. Real Everyone dangerous. from New York stinks. They do. And by the way, real dangerous. They talk about themselves as if they're me and they're up there. Here's what they're doing. Real dangerous comedy. So I was at the airport yesterday. Man, that place is crazy. My uh, flight was late. Joe List. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got the Me Too movement coming up. Uh, COVID and, uh, my flight. You're not as cool as you're romanticizing in your little New York bar heads. Did you see that tweet that went viral the other day where it was this girl who was like, if you don't have bodegas, oh where my God, yeah. do you get paper towels and M&Ms? And every single person was like, uh, anywhere, any Walgreens, <laughs> CBS, the store. So these New York people... A thing. Like they used to be. Maybe they never were cool. You know, I go to New York and it's a bunch of hollering assholes. Hey! What? Ah, you're running over my pizza here! Shut up. That whole accent is trash. Okay? Italians, garbage. Pizza? That's all they eat. Pizza, 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 pizza. Donut, 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 donut. Croissants. They live off croissants, pizza, and donuts all day. That's why their minds are like this. I was in New York. And how do you even, you're walking around all day. Everybody's as big as a house. I go, well, that's because every food stand, all they sell is hot pretzels and croissants and donuts. This is what these people eat. And then they go up on stage. Their minds are all carb loaded. And yeah, they're so badass. Well, hey, maybe you start showing us what happens uh, in between the comedy sets because the comedy sets are not very badass. I'll tell you that right now, Cigar Ari, wearing his little, uh, oh, that's so cool, like Mad Max, right? You could fit through any keyhole in that town, skinny boy. Fool York. I hate New York now. It's just loser. The creek in the cave closed. Black Lives Matter. Look at this. How badass. Look at what their marquee says. I'm not kidding. Black Lives Matter. Okay. Maybe comedy should have mattered a little bit more. Because now you're closed. Oh. All right, guys. Come on in. Um, so this is the theater. You can see... Uh, Rebecca Trent. And by the way, uh, the Legion of Skanks, I thought you guys were hatred guys like me. La you work at the Black Lives Matter Cafe. <laughs> I mean, come on. How badass. Ooh, come into the gritty New York Black Lives Matter theater. Oh, it's so badass. Watch your language, though, or you might get banned from Twitter there. You know, how badass is it? Rebecca Trent. I'd like to see you locked up in an all-woman's prison, whoring yourself out for toothpaste. Uh, now, we've got a washer dryer set up on the stage. Normally, this is like a 10 by 10 stage. They're showing that the whole place is shot down Black Lives Matter, right? They got an old washer and dryer. A washer and dryer I wouldn't use as a set prop if I was showing you Taxi Driver's old apartment unit. Okay? This is stuff out of the Joker movie. Look at this trash. This dryer is going to burn up your belongings. This washer is going to do the same. It's going to yeah. shrink your clothes. Another little staging area down here. I haven't watched this. We're watching this live the for the first pops time. Were hit the hardest. Look at this shit. The hardest time coming back. The mom and pops were hit the hardest. Guess what? Not around here at Red Bar. We're the most mom and pop that yeah. there is. We hit the hardest. Right up the ass. One mom, one pop, nothing more. Yeah, no cops. I'm just trying to preserve this business while this madness unfolds. Cut to now, it's closed down. The nice really pinball machine. To remind us that you are up on that stage by Nerd. yourself, but this comes from a community. This comes from somewhere. I worry. 
About Red Bar? That comedians that I love dearly are going to retire, that they're going to move away. Oh, that's so <laughs> sad. Maybe you and Gavin McKinnis should go get coffee and talk about how horrible New York is. I hate New York people now. They're really just, they're I not. I really hope the city just dies. Seriously. And it never comes back and it's just Ari Shafir living next to a garbage can. Yeah, I want it to be rat. like District 9. No <laughs> one goes in, no one goes out, and there's something hovering over the top that's killing the comedians. We're losing comedians to self-medication. Oh! Comedians. So it had nothing to do with COVID. So COVID's a cover-up for we're losing comedians to self-medication. Can I have a list, please? Because I would love to make videos. And where what we, are the medications? We're losing. Are you Rich Voss's wife? That's Rebecca Trent. I know. Looks like Bonnie McFarlane. You're losing comedians to medication. Are you guys pathetic or what? Hold on. I dropped my pop up. I dropped my medication. No one lost me to medication this year, and I'm on a ton of it. Comedians aren't people that can be isolated, and taking away the stage is sort of like taking away the dragon that they're chasing. Oh, isn't that something? Where do you work now? Starbucks? Hey. Uh-oh, so Ian Finance. This guy's bisexual, not because he's actually bi, but because he wants it all. He can't get a woman? Why not? I'll take a guy. You know, being bisexual as a guy just means you are so fucked up. You'll do anything to come. You're that lousy. You're like a character from the show Girls, where they would mock how disgusting a person could no, be. They had more self-respect. Yeah, they did have more self-respect in the show <laughs> Girls, you know, than this whole Legion of Skanks crew. Look at his kitchen, by the way. Imagine you open the door and you're met with an old kitchen. Look at this. He lives in squalor. Hello guys, come on in. I'm writing a book. Oh, you're writing a book, yeah. I need finance. Hello. Is it a suicide my note? My bicycle, Zol Henry. Oh, I love that. Your bicycle's in the kitchen with an old bottle of water that you're using as a water bottle. He refills his Essentia bottle day in day out. Hey, I hope rinses. I can't wait till you get BPAs. Not one person on this planet has been bothered by BPA poisoning ever. No, maybe that's what gave you your disease. Oh, yeah. This is a cat wheel I got before Look at this the pandemic. Guy. It was $200, and I said, why not? We'll always have live indoor entertainment. Whoa! He does it all, folks. So he's taking it up the ass by guys. He's dropped to his knees to suck the long dong on a 2 a.m. Wednesday night. After all the girls said no, he goes over to this weird part of town. Right, if I put my mustache on your uh, stash down there. I mean, to me, that is truly sickening to be bisexual. Maybe, it is. Huh? This will never go away. I'll always have work. I have like good days and bad weeks. Nothing will make you feel less essential than them rolling out the different phases and your line of work is not even in a phase. Whoa. This is how I spend most of my day. Okay, maybe you should get up and apply for some jobs. I don't understand. They're just sitting there. Uh, Barnes & Noble Cafe is hiring. Go is start. he really a gay prostitute or is that a yes, cool Yes, no, I'm not joke. kidding. He is a gay pro. He does all this stuff. All these New York guys drop to the floor and they do the Dylan. Where do you think Tim Dylan got his start? <laughs> New York, I'm not kidding. They drop to the ground and they do the Dylan. <laughs> the next time you think Tim Dylan's a badass for having Candace Owens on, close your eyes and imagine him him 69ing a guy. That's your hero. Does Candace know about this? If she did, believe me, she'd cheat him out of money. <laughs> um, this is truly pathetic. I, I'm not donating to comedians. Get off your ass. Knock on the door at Arby's, okay? No, but he's playing electric guitar on a Monday afternoon with not a dime. And believe me, if you think these people have been paying their rent throughout COVID, you got another thing coming. I can't wait till the evictions start. We haven't even gotten into the goodbye phase where they kick you out on the street. You know, these guys, eight months, he probably hasn't paid. The minute COVID came out, they go, I'm not paying a bill. We followed this. Remember Jackie Knight? 
I'm not paying my bills. It's uh, it's all right. Hey, has anyone checked on Jackie Knight, by Jackie the way? Jackie Knight she's died. Still alive. No. She's potting <laughs> soil now. It's been a long time. Listen, these guys aren't paying their bills. And once New York figures out how to evict these people, you're going to see this guy. He's going to be sleeping on his guitar as a bed, using the neck as the pillow, you know. Here. <laughs> New York's going to be different for a very long time. It's going to be weird. It's going to get really gnarly. Living oh. in the city during COVID makes me want to kill myself and not have a kid. Makes me want to kill myself. Really? I mean, I couldn't even imagine having those feelings. Those are suicid- suicidal thoughts. There we are. Back in New York City. So this is the comedy club where Joe DeRosa makes sandwiches now. So this was shot even before. So you got the creek in the cave. That's closed down. They turned that into a place where you could get a temporary tattoo and some bad coffee. And then uh, here's the stand, which is now a submarine shop run by Joe DeRosa. I, and this is incredible. This isn't just a comedy club. It's a real restaurant. Oh, yeah, a real restaurant. Bamba, look alive. Only comics are impressed by a real restaurant, not like those fake restaurants. It's like a real restaurant. It's like a real restaurant. They have like a microwave and a stove. <laughs> More equipment than I have in my apartment. Buddy. How embarrassing. Look at that guy. We're a family business. My personal experience. I will- Chris, Chris Italia. Italia. <laughs> Guys, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Chris Italia. I need more information Co- about what did this I, man I'm now. like, just a minute ago, I'm like, I hate New York and the fucking Italians everywhere and all this shit. And here's the owner of the stand, Chris Italia, co-owner. I'd like to prank call this guy into oblivion. The stand comedy and club and restaurant. Chris Italia. That would be like if my name was Mike Hava. <laughs> Weekdays are Nick was a first responder on 9-11 and I'm not Fill just going to give up. I didn't give up then and I'm not going to give up now. That's not what New Yorkers do. We don't give up. How- oh yeah? You're going to be opening a fat sales chain and working for Turtle in a few months. Look at this. This is the guy. Do you know Luis J. Gomez? Oh yeah. Look at this fat fuck going over the books here. He's got paper books. Has no idea you could do this digitally now. Look at this, a clipboard and some papers. He's going, am I going to be able to afford the bills? I better call Joe DeRosa and stop making some Marsala meatball subs. Can I reinvest in the city and help it thrive again? Uh-oh. When did mush what? become What the food? hell is this? Uh, just an ad. Mush-o-matic. Okay, well, whatever. That's enough of that. Uh, very make fucking you watch cool. watch an ad in the middle of the news video? Come on. In the middle of the news, on my stream. Do the comedians get any of that money? or They don't give a shit. These comedians <laughs> have no money. And I want to show you, it's getting even worse. Even big time comedians are suffering still. You know, let's catch up with them. Let's catch up with Nikki Glazer, who also made the news recently. You know, this is Amy Schumer's best friend, she had a, a morning talk show on Sirius XM that was doing very well. Big time comic, making a lot of money. Let's see where Nikki Glazer is now. Let's see if this is queued up. 27.45, yeah. And uh, we're going to cut to the news. This is a PBS News Hour live report. And there's Jules hosting the show there. <laughs> Accelerated a change in housing in this country <laughs> that began well before Listen COVID-19 spread. Millennials, adults between the ages of 24 and 39, continue to move back home with their parents in significant numbers. Wow. For some, it's by choice. So but- listen to this. Uh, people, because of COVID, they're moving back home with their parents. Sounds unbelievable, right? But we saw Kim Congdon do this. She moved in with her two stepdads that are both not even related to her. Two husbands of her mom that went awry, that went south. Now she's living with him. God knows what kind of turns they've taken in their two recliners facing the old TV. She comes in with those dirty panties, all that Mexican flesh, (laughs) and their mustaches melt. 
Uh, two white guys, by the way. And then you got, uh, who's your friend? Sarah Weinshank moved back home with her parents after her 72-hour psych evaluation holiday. And uh, you're hearing this more. Let's see what the uh, what Nikki Glazer is going through this holiday season. For many, it's a matter of necessity. Special correspondent Catherine Rampell, who's a columnist for The Washington Post, has our report. <laughs> I was an ugly child. People would tell my mom that my sister should be a model, like, right in front of me. And then I'd emerge from behind my mom's legs, like, Nosferatu, like, what should I be? At the start of 2020, comedian Nikki Glaser was riding high. Wow. A racy Netflix special, national tour. Riding high. TV shows in development. Then, you know what happened. Everything started shutting down, and I was like, I'll just go back to St. Louis for a week or so, you know? Seven months later... I'm a 36-year-old woman who is living with her parents. And- what the fucking fuck? Seven months later, I'm a 36-year-old comedian living with her parents. Shut it down. What, what could possibly be the reason for this? She's got money, right? You would hope. I mean, even Mersh figured out how to live in his own little apartment for 400 euros a month. <laughs> Uh, what's going on here? This isn't cute. It's not funny. And your parents shouldn't allow it. Seven months. Time to get a job. You could go outside. It's not Chernobyl. Even in Chernobyl, people were still living amongst the radiation in those little shacks. It's Christmas at Ground Zero. And if the radiation level's okay, I'll go out with you and find a new mutation on New Year's Day. Remember? You don't. Weird Al. She's living with her parents. Seven months. The news reporter is like, are you kidding me? Or TV shows in development. Look at this. Then you know what happened. Everything started shutting down and I was like, I'll just go back to St. Louis for a week or so, you know? Seven months too. later. I'm a 36 year old woman who is living with her parents and the there's no end in sight. No Little end in sight, huh? Glazer know you need some money, March, you fucking whore. should be a poster child for her generation's response to the pandemic. Young adults moving back home with their parents. Jared this is Savannah. the highest it's ever been stretching back to 1900 and the historical record. Economist Richard Fry just co- I was gonna say even Jordan Peterson is moving back in with his kids. Well, it's not really much because of COVID. Stupid idiot Jordan Peterson. I mean, this is terrible. Even Brian Redband is moving back in with Joe Rogan. We're going to show you that. Joe Rogan bought Redband a house. And I have reason to believe that Joe Rogan gave all of his buddies COVID pay. I believe this. Joey Diaz got COVID pay. Tony Hinchcliffe. He gave them all the money Tony they would have made. literally seems more relaxed yes. than he's ever been. The last Let me tell you months. something about Tony, and we're going to go over Kill Tony. They haven't been making a dime for eight months. Uh, I, I, I want to show you what happened here. Kill Tony uh, was a, a big popular show at the Comedy Store, and they were filling 300 seats every week at the comedy store and selling those tickets for God knows how much money. And that ticket money was going to them. They also had a hundred thousand views. They were selling ads. They've got less views. Then red, we got way more views than them. My coverage of Tony gets triple the views of his episodes. I can't imagine them getting any ad money and they're not selling any tickets. Of course, So where has Tony been getting his money for the last eight months? What does he do? Where's the money coming from? Joe Rogan's given these guys, I believe, the same pay. I think he said, hey, I'm going to give you all what you would have made during COVID. And that's why they're so relaxed, because Tony should be freaking out. He's got Corvette payments. Those are twelve hundred a month. Okay. And uh, I I think Joe said, you know what? I got the money. I'm going to give all my friends. I'm going to take care of you and get you through this COVID. You just do the comedy and we'll figure it out afterwards. I really think that's what's happened. And I think that's why you're seeing them move to Austin one by one. You know, Joe's going to take care of us. That's what you're seeing here. So the comedians are moving at home with their parents. And if their parents don't have any money, well, Rogan will take care of you. How about that? Rogan has, in fact, given me a few thousand dollars as well. (laughs) In new Scars Club members for making fun of him. 
So I am being paid by him as well. Wrote a study Let's see showing that a majority of young adults are now living with their parents, though the share had been rising for a while. Many of us expected that it was going to peak and begin to decline after the Great Recession. That did not occur. It continued to rise. And now it is sharply accelerated again in Accelerate. the space of, you know, five months. Millions of millennials have moved back home. Wow. Many, like Eric Rivera, Eric lost their Rivera? Jobs, his in public relations. Nice router. It's so pathetic. If you live with your parents and you're over the age of 19, you're a complete failure. Sorry. Unless you listen to Red Bar, we need you to stay at home. All right. Uh, very, very cool, huh? Did you know that this was happening? Sorry, Nikki. You're finished.